Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm here with another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to get started making your own sampler instruments that you can play just like any other VSTi using your keyboard or your uh, keyboard keys themselves. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get multi-samples. Multi-samples are going to be inside of sample packs or something you make yourself. You can do that via software or hardware. And a quick side note before we get into everything, Tom Cosman made an incredible Max for Live device that automates that process. He made it for hardware synthesizers. You can decide the interval of samples. You can decide uh, just a ton of stuff. And then once you plug it into your hardware synthesizer, it just automates the process for you. Then I did a tutorial about how to do that right inside of your DAW to sample any soft synth patches you might want. And just go check it out. I'm going to leave links to it on the blog, but I highly suggest it if you're going to get into sampling. However, if you're not into sampling, you're going to want to get some samples. And in general, if you're looking at a sample pack with multi samples, you're going to want every note would be the best, obviously. So every note of the piano sampled, recorded by itself would be your best emulation of that instrument and that goes for our VSTIs as well but if you want to skip an interval so go from C skip C sharp and go to D then you can do it that way too because then you're only using the transpose function to move up and down one semitone and that's not too much and in general for people who are trying to get a good sampling of an instrument but not go too crazy in terms of file size they go every third so they would sample C, they would skip C sharp, they would skip D, and they would sample E. So that way they're only using the transpose function for two steps and they're getting every third note perfect. So just some things to think about. It's obviously gonna increase your file size when you do every note. It's gonna decrease your file size, but decrease the quality or how faithful the sample is because you're gonna be using transpose. So anyway, that's just, I wanted to get that out of the way before we get into making the instrument. I'm gonna be using Ableton Sampler. I've got a sample pack down here. I'll leave a link to it on the blog in case you wanna check it out. Lee and Switch Deep Dark Dubstep, really great stuff. Inside of here, they've got LS Pad Multis, and these are multi-sampled. So if I come into Ether, <laughs> You'll see that they're labeled A sharp zero, A sharp one, A sharp two, and so forth. And that means they've sampled the patch or the synth uh, for each A sharp note from zero to five. And then they went to C, then D, then E. So as you can see, we skipped C sharp, we skipped D sharp. So we didn't get every note sampled, but we got enough to make a really nice instrument. So what you're gonna wanna do is select them all. And inside the browser, you just hold down shift to select them all. And you come into the sampler. I've just got it on a sampler track here. It says drop samples here. Just take them all and drop them in there. And it's going to say 36 of 36 samples are selected. Now, right now, if I hit any key on the keyboard, it's going to play all of those 36 samples at the same time. That's not what we want. It would just sound like garbage. Let's check it out. Oof, look at that. So that's just too much noise. I'm going to come into the zone section and what we're going to want to do is for each one of these instances of a sample inside of the sampler, we're going to want to tweak the root key. So if I'm selecting here, I've got A sharp zero, I'm going to come down to root key right inside of the sampler and I'm going to drop it down to A sharp zero. Boom. And then I'm going to come move to A sharp one and again, drop that root key down to A sharp one. And I'm gonna to wanna to do that for every single sample in here. I've actually gone ahead and done that and it's right here. So if I come into any sample here, for example, let's just pick one at random, D3. If I come into the sampler sample page, it says root key D3. And if I move down to D4, it says D4. So everything is good to go. You can also check by looking at the zone here, the R is where the root key is. So if I hover over here, we're looking at D4. If you look up here on the top, that's exactly where it should be. Now, what we wanna do from here is actually do a little bit of housekeeping. Now, you don't need to do this step, though I really prefer it so I can see visually what's being warped a lot easier. And what I do is sort them from C0 all the way up to C3. And the way to do that is you can see here when you import them in their alphabetical order, but that's not the way a keyboard keys are laid out. It goes from C to C. 
So we actually want to get all of the zeros sample. So I'm going to just come in. If I hold control now, I can select clips individually. So C0, D0, E0, F sharp 0, and G sharp 0. And now if I pull these up, I want to go above the A sharp 0 because remember it starts with C and A is going to be the last one in this particular sequence of notes. And then I'm going to want to do things, the same thing with uh, the C1. So C1, hold down control, D1, E1, F sharp 1, and G sharp 1. And then again, pull that above the A sharp 1. And now we have a little bit better uh, organization. And you can see here now the R's are kind of descending uh, in a nice orderly fashion. And that's going to play a big part in the next thing. Again, not necessary for the instrument to work quickly, just something to think about. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this next instance where I've already done that. Everything is hunky door. If you look here, all of the R's are just descending very nicely. Perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is click anywhere in here and select a, select all by control A to select all and right click and then say distribute ranges around root key. And what this is going to do is it's going to distribute those ranges evenly around the root key. So as you can see, each one of these notes is actually going to be playing two notes. It's going to play the root note, which was, again, D. Here is D0, but it's actually going to get transposed up to D sharp. And that, like I said before, as long as you're not transposing more than two semitones, you should be good to go. Obviously, you can transpose much more, and it's still going to sound okay. But if you're going for really faithful emulations, you don't want to go any more than two semitones up or down. So this instrument's looking really good. It's going to sound really good. Uh, if I come in and I got to make sure my track is armed here. So there we go. I've got my instrument ready to go. And now I can play it just like any other like piano, for instance, or right here on my keyboard. So now that we have that all set up, there's some other things we can do. And this is going to go beyond what the initial focus of this tutorial was, was to show you how to get this started and cook in to get the uh, playable instrument inside of Sampler. But we can also get in and start making a nice rack. So if I group this, pull open those macros, if I come into the filter here, I can, you know, map the decay, maybe map the sustain, maybe. Let's map that sustain here, map the release. And now I can, you know, I have my ADSR right here inside of this, and I can really change how it sounds. <laughs> So now that I have that, maybe I want to add some effects. And I mean, I'm just doing this stuff on the fly. But again, this is beyond the scope of what I wanted to cover before. But maybe if you want to take like the resonator or something, which is a really nice way to change the sound. And let's just go like Berlin or something. And then map that dry wet to say macro five. And now we can really change the overall sound of the instrument by just using this one macro. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and just play this a little bit. So that's a good way to get like two instruments in one. And obviously if we wanted to do some like a grain delay or something like that would be another cool way to get. Let's get some crazy Borg type stuff and then just map that dry wet again. So now we have like three instruments in one and you can keep going with that. There's no reason to stop there, but it depends on how crazy you want to get with your instruments and how much versatility you want or need for your particular project. Anyway, I hope you learned something about making your own sampler instruments inside of Ableton Live. I hope you learned something. Rate, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah. And we will see you next time. Peace. Oh.